Hi friends, another interesting story here today. We are at Leaf's Garden and uh, it's, it's magical. We've been here a couple times and it's, it's an example of how you can plant so many fruit trees densely together and everyone seems to be happy, everyone seems to be fruiting. Here you see guava, behind you you see a sapajira. But today we wanted to show you something more interesting here. This here is a hybrid dragon fruit that has not been named yet but it looks from what Leaf said that it flowers the first flowering dragon fruit and the last one as well so it's always flowering and I wanted to show you different stages of flowers here so this one just started down behind here is another flower that's a little bit longer and there is another dragon fruit there which is full of longer flowers show you the fruit down here very beautiful looking uh, we'll show you how it tastes uh, we will do a tasting together and see how it tastes Another important thing that I wanted to tell you is many people want to grow dragon fruits but look at how heavy they get so always use like a concrete uh, pillar like this so this this is concrete and it goes into the ground and Florida we have a lot of high winds so we don't want the whole thing to topple down and it gets pretty heavy so you can see here how they are doing very well and the concrete post looks like five feet tall and uh, with this height it every it seems like the dragon fruits here are doing really well so a good example to learn from another good example of how you can prune your trees and keep them still productive is this one we this is another of leaves carambola this is a curry carambola or star fruit tree and you see how he has trimmed it it's been trimmed at around eight feet tall and what we learned today from leaf is that he was telling us that it's actually fruiting it drew, the branches droop and all the fruits are between six and eight feet uh, height distance so whatever is high up it's actually not much productive for fruit and you can keep the tree small and have a lot of fruits you see a lot of flowers here and another beautiful thing is that it actually looks more ornamental and you will even have a small space to sit under it so it serves all the purposes many people talk about food forest but this actually where i'm standing does feel like it's a forest because you are under canopies of trees and a lot of different trees like we have mango here we have a broadleaf papaya there this is the broadleaf papaya really big <laughs> and uh, we have a sour soap tree there and every couple of steps you will see some other tree or some other edible this is a kind of vine that you can use uh, in cooking and another broadleaf papaya here really huge and look at look at the amount of flowers in this papaya we have a lot of edibles down here another anona here so you know it this is how the food forest should be every small space should be utilized for something edible or something fruiting or some veggies so um, but it it's not easy you have to keep your soil healthy and uh, mulched and that's what we see as well you see around down there it's it's it looks like it's been well mulched uh, these are different plants for sale some plants need more sun so an area in your space where you need uh, open area where you can keep plants for sale so a lot of different butterscotch sapodillas are here for sale each support in this food forest is made specifically for that specific plant so it's it's very scientific how it is done here and a lot to learn here as well here we see a nice Daisy garden with a nice uh, I think this is the bitter gourd we eat a lot of this in our uh, Indian cuisine as well um, a, a nice um, creeper and then it crawls on top and the fruits and uh, veggies hang from there I'm worried about iguanas in Florida and here is a canal so I think it has an easy access for all the iguanas so we wanted to see what 
leaf has planted by there is a miracle fruit uh, tree here okay. and mostly the bananas because they are planted in rows like this that way you can make them more productive otherwise banana make a big one and looks like each banana is already fruiting it only keeps the one that's fruiting and takes away the one that are not fruiting so Here, the cashew tree and the guava, the star apple. One more interesting thing we found out that this June plum usually people don't know how to eat it, and many people say that it has to turn yellow. And yes, when it turns yellow, you peel the skin and it, it's sweet and sour. But we also learned that it can be eaten green like this if you have a miracle fruit tree. And this is a miracle uh, berry, so it's uh, what it does is once you eat it everything tastes sweet let's see no it's sweeter now and it's crunchy and sweet and at this stage it's not supposed to have any seeds inside the hardcore seed that usually is inside the june plum it doesn't seem like they're seeds so you can crunch the whole thing like you would crunch a guava. Sweet and crunchy, not juicy. But in summertime when you are working out in the heat and you need something crunchy. But always important that you have the miracle berry growing in your yard as well. It's a small tree. Doesn't take much space. Does like to be in acidic soil. So all you need to make sure is that your soil is it on the acidic side um, or you can always grow it in a pot where you can maintain what kind of soil you give for the roots so I think this is the best best for growing in the big pot <laughs> this is the continuation of the video that we were taking at leaves and this is the dragon fruit yeah. later on when we were talking he actually informally named it as dragon's balls so <laughs> this is what he wants the fruit to be named it's his own hybrid so like atimoyas dragon fruits are hand pollinated and when you pollinate different uh, species sometimes a new variety is formed so it's his own variety and it's a hybrid and he was pretty mysterious about the origins of this uh, but we understand if it's a great tasting fruit who cares about that right so this climate here in south florida is the best for growing dragon fruit we haven't tasted this exact fruit before but we tasted a lot of dragon fruits from the store and every time the taste was kind of bland like tasting cucumber uh, there was no real taste a little bit of juiciness some fresh uh, taste to it but no I would consider like a cucumber not not much than that so let's let's see how this one tastes So inside you can see it's uh, it's dark pink or magenta color the seeds are black colored seeds we will make another slice here and so the way you eat is you just either you can slice into two or three and then you peel like a banana so it's very easily peelable like this and then you eat it It's very sweet it's not bland like the ones that I have eaten before in the stores it melts in the mouth seeds are not a problem at all they kind of like very easily crossable it's crunchy seeds you can crunch them there it actually gives something to the texture of each bite and the flesh itself is melts in the mouth slightly juicy you can see but not very very juicy you can't see much juice drip 
so it's not a messy fruit you can easily eat it off of hand yeah overall i think mm, hint of banana slightly a little like not tart i wouldn't call it tart but slight very mildly tart so much so that it's not overly sweet like sapadillas so um i think all in all very good tasting dragon fruit dragon's balls is what he wants to call them so good tasting ones if you like this fruit uh, don't just try in the store find someone who is growing and try them and uh, and then make a decision we tried from store for a long time and that kind of puts put it, us off in getting um a dragon fruit plant for ourselves but once you try from a grower who is growing that's a selected variety the taste is completely different and you would like to have one in your garden as well so that is it <laughs> put us more comments if you have any any um experiences eating dragon fruit or if there is any subtle variations in taste in different varieties of dragon fruit we would like to know or if you grow some dragon fruits and want to share with us we would even buy from you to taste because we would like tasting tropical fruits we want to explore more varieties and our videos here will let everyone know what varieties are available and what their taste compares between different varieties so please let us know and we would be happy to come drive to you or meet you or get those fruits shipped to us and uh, make videos like this thank you very much we'll be back hopefully with some new fruit to taste in coming weeks thank you for watching